Welcome to another Kings of War Battle Report, Tournament Report, Game 5, Beringer versus the Northern Alliance, 2150 points, the scenario was push. If you've been following our battle reports, this is Game 5 of the Randy and Craig's Ginormous Tournament. Uh, the rules for this are pretty simple. Each player will have four armies that they can use throughout the event. Each army must be used two times. Any army that won must be used in the following game. The other player has a choice of which army he will use to try and gain their revenge. Any winning, winning army may modify their list by up to 15% before playing their next game. They will not know their next opponent, but this is to correct any design errors. Scoring will be done by the blackjack system. At the end of eight games, the scores will be totaled. If the total scores are within 10% of each other, it is a draw. A different scenario is used in each game. Once that scenario is rolled, it is marked off the list of available scenarios. The first game of the event, it is a player's choice which army to field. If, if the game is a draw, then each player may play whatever army they want in the following game as long as it is available. So if some of you haven't seen my previous battle reports, I'll just go over what the uh, tourney score is so far. Game 1 was the Empire of Dust versus the Brotherhood. Craig easily won that one, winning 14-7. The uh, game two was, again, Empire of Dust because Craig won with that list. He has to use it the second time. And this time I brought Forces of Nature, and that one I won uh, with a final score of 15-6. to six. Game three was Forces of Nature versus Salamanders, and I won that one again, and now I'm up 15-6. to six. The uh, fourth game was Salamanders versus the Brother Mark, a bitterly fought battle that Craig pulled out 14-7. to seven. Our total score for both is Randy's at 44 and Craig at 40. But if you read the rules of our tournament, if you're within 10%, the tournament is a draw. So we still have four games to go to uh, break this deadlock. So Craig had uh, painted up three regiments of, of uh, ice naiads, and I might say beautifully, uh, to add to his force. And so he came up with basically like these little battalions of one unit of snow foxes, one unit of ice naiads and uh, a unit of snow trolls and those were just like stacked three across the battlefield and I think the idea was to take the charge uh, use the snow foxes to uh, uh, take the blunt and then the naiads would hold then the naiads would disengage move out of the way and then the uh, trolls would come in and attack so um, good plan overall he also had uh, three ice kin bolt throwers that was like basically one bolt thrower for each of his little uh, regiments uh, Lord on a frost, frost excuse me, Lord on a frost fang uh, for inspire, and a scald also for inspire, and then lastly a horde of frost fang cavalry, and that was when everything got stuck up. He could bring those guys in to sweep the whole table. I'm pretty sure I copied this list for somebody. Uh, I was trying to come up with a list for my friend David Brown, and David used to play a all cavalry and chariot. Uh, army in Warhammer and so we've had a hard time simulating that in this game because there's no chariots so I had my friend Sean Dietrich make me some bases that are the same size as my regiments of Sons of Corgan and that lets me put two chariots on each one so that's how I'm going to use the chariot my old chariot models I mean I've got four of them they're very nice looking and I wanted to use them again and I could buy more knights it's not the question of buying them uh, it's just, the, and I could use my Empire Knights for, for them too. It doesn't matter. But I just think it's cool to get to use my old Chaos stuff. So I had uh, three regiments of Draugr, and my Draugr this game were my zombies from my undead army, which is probably the most appropriate figure for me if you think about it. Then I had four regiments of Sons of Corgan. Uh, excuse me. Two of the regiments that actually that had the horses, I gave the. Uh, the guys too, which gives them uh, stealthy. And then um, first unit had the uh, uh, potion of the caterpillar, and the second unit had the uh, meat of madness. Then the next two, the chariots, I thought they looked more brutal looking, so I gave them the mark of the warrior, so that gives them brutal. And uh, the first group I gave the blessing of the gods, the second group I gave the uh, uh, boots of striding. And then I had this really cool unit of Marauder Horsemen that I've had for a long time, and they're beautifully painted. I think Brad Grinstead painted these, actually, or part, partly painted them, because, I mean, they look really nice. 
pretty sure it's not my job. Uh, so I put those in the list with their throwing axes. Then I had three troops of Tundra Wolves, and those I actually rescued from my old GW Undead Army as the Wolves. So they become Tundra Wolves. A, uh, a Cursed Sun, uh, which was an old GW uh, Chaos model. And then a Thane on Frostfang, and that was one of a Reaper um, Brass Bull with an old corn uh, Games Workshop model on top of it. And lastly, I had Maganild of the Fallen, uh, and he was just an old corn uh, Chaos Infantry figure that I that I had. So based on my my friend Dave's old Warhammer list. Uh, he had basically a unit of wolves or chaos hounds or something, you know, for each unit of knights. And so that's what I have replicated. I have a unit of uh, uh, hounds, I mean wolves, tundra wolves for each unit of Sons of Corgan. Or I have the uh, horse raiders. And I might get, get crazy and paint some more horse raiders up because I kind of like the models. Uh, and I think I have a few just laying around in a box somewhere. Um, so that's how the unit set up. I also have it set up with, uh, there's a hero with inspire. Uh, I don't, maybe the middle guy isn't inspiring. Oh, maybe not. Uh, but there's a hero with each section, so the idea being that maybe that the uh, hero could also charge in simultaneously with the uh, unit of knights to give it that extra oomph to push it over the top. So uh, that's how the army is set up, and I'll just show you what my deployment was. The, down here on this end was my first unit of Draugr, and their idea was, my idea with them is just to march them across the table, uh, being covered by the speed of uh, all my guys there in the middle, and hopefully they get across and score, since the scenario is push. So that's the uh, the first unit of Sons of Corgan. Those are one with the uh, warrior mark for Brutal, and they also have the Blessing of the Gods. The next unit, of course, is just a unit of Tundra Wolves, and then the uh, Thane is on a Frostfang. Uh, he's pretty decent. Five swings, yeah, he's okay. And I gave him the inspiring talisman because there's nothing over there to inspire, and I needed something. Then the horse raiders, and then the chosen, I think is what his name is, and then I'll find another picture. So this is my uh, the other flank. So I have both units of Draugr down here, each of them holding a counter. Uh, there's a giant woods right in front of them, so my whole goal is to get them uh, up into those woods and then cross the middle of the table. Next to them are two units of Tundra Wolves, and then lastly, one of the uh, units of Sons of Corgan. This one had the, uh, of course, they had the Guile on them, so they they were um, stealthy. Uh, right in the middle was another unit of Sons of Corgan. This, this one had the Mead of Madness. No, these guys here had the Mead of Madness. Uh, those guys there had the, stri had the st uh, Striding. And then the one next to them, which was another of the uh, that was with guys, where was um, had uh, the potion of the caterpillar. My plan here was the, his artillery hill, though you don't see it. I'm going to show you his deployment in a second. He had a, had a hill in his deployment zone, uh, and he had all three bolt throwers on it. So my idea was to rush that hill. Magnild is there. He has that special ability to fly once per game, and uh, he was going to try to rush up there. Those two sets of tundra wolves have a speed of 18 inches. I mean a uh, uh, on a march or on a charge, so they're pretty fast too. Uh, followed up, of course, by the uh, both those three uh, regiments of uh, hard-hitting knights. So uh, uh, my idea, like I said, the whole idea was to crush the artillery hill and then sweep the rest of the army. Was to just escort those three units of Draugr because I'm trying from the beginning of the game to focus on the scenario and everything in the game is to protect those three units. You can clearly see. Craig's three battalions, each with a snow fox, each with an ice naiad, and each with a unit of snow trolls. Uh, on top of the hill here, he had uh, his three ice kin uh, bolt throwers. Uh, obviously, here on the far, on his far left, were the uh, Frostfang cavalry unit, which are a ferociously nasty unit. Uh, you can't see him, but right in the very middle is his Lord on the Frostfang, right in between the two main battalions there and then over on the very far right I'm pretty sure is the Scald and I think he I pretty I think he has the loot I think that was his job as he had he was basically just an ASB with loot like everybody else's army so uh, very ferocious looking deployment with all those gigantic figures out there and um, quite a few drops I mean it doesn't seem like it has a lot of drops because it's fairly elite but uh, I mean just the three battalion thing there and the two characters that's 11 
uh, right there. So uh, that's huge. I mean, as far as as having a goodly number of drops and the uh, artillery on the hill was uh, particularly daunting. But I had a plan to get rid of it, and pretty much the whole battle swirls around me getting rid of everything on that stupid hill and escorting those Draugr across because I just don't want them to get shot because they're they're not particularly. Uh, firm you know i don't know what the word is that they're, they're, they yeah they don't waver but on the other hand they're not fast and they're pretty easy to kill so uh that's my plan and uh this game just was chaos you'll love it craig took the first turn and put all of his shots for his ice kin bolt throwers into my rightmost unit of sons of corgan the ones that do not have the guys on them and I think he did a couple of wounds, but really his shooting this whole entire game, despite having a pretty decent shooting attack and uh, an optimal position, did not really do as much. I mean, I was really expecting to take a unit off a turn, and that didn't happen, so I was happy. So yeah, I did a turn one charge to get rid of those foxes. I'm just trying to get the chaff out of the way so that I have a, a better shot of uh, hitting a substantial unit. And I don't mind losing my dog. But the uh, the other thing I realized is that the uh, Ice Nyads aren't that great a fighter. So I went ahead and uh, charged in and just hoped that the Ice Nyads would, uh, would delay. You know, I would delay him by jamming him up for a turn. That would give my uh, army a chance to maneuver more over on this left side. On the right-hand side, I moved everything up to... Uh, to try to get in position to rush that artillery hill and I know that he was going to have to make up a whole bunch of moves to try to stop it. The uh, My two units in the middle are basically terrain proof at least for a turn so that really helps them out. But the uh, I've got both units of Tundra Wolves close. I've got uh, Magniold ready to, uh, to do his fly thing up to the top and I get rid of those uh, bolt throwers. I'm sorry for the notes behind guys. I keep forgetting stuff on my units, and even in this game, I did. I left the note behind on one of the units and forgot my, uh, I forgot one of my magic items on them. But I'm trying to do better. I just have a hard time remembering in the heat of battle. You see, my Draugr ran up behind the woods. See, I'm now I'm safe from getting shot by uh, the bolters, and so that makes me happy. And really, the, my, my plan then just became: I just need to get rid of that unit of ice brown I mean the uh, frost fangs over there if I could get rid of them and attack the artillery hill I have two points for sure that could go across the table and uh, try to win me the game so here I just moved up on the left flank my Draugr over there it's on, not on the picture but there's actually a gap between the woods and the edge of the table and I would have been smarter to try to go through that gap but there was a, a wall over there and it kept me from marching up so I couldn't really figure out what to do, so I just thought I would just go up and try to hide behind the woods and, and maybe see. I really all I have to do is get rid of that unit on the the units on the left there, and I'm and I've got you know some decent stuff there to uh, maybe get rid of those trolls and just march that that marker right past the middle too. So I mean, I am really working in this game to win the scenario and not worry about losing my troops so much. And uh, I'm trying. <laughs> So Craig does everything possible to jam me up. He went ahead and moved the um, Frostfang Cav around uh, to line up on it. He, he can't see my Draugr with the markers because I'm hiding behind the woods. I'm not in the woods. I do not go in the woods until they are eliminated and the shooting as well. Uh, so uh, one of his uh, box units charged Magnil to try to keep him from doing his flying maneuver. The other guys, I just could not get past them. I was all jammed up there, uh, just waiting for something else to happen. His bolters went ahead and did four more wounds to my unit of uh, Sons of Corgan with the warrior mark on them. And, but they have the uh, uh, they have striding, so they're going to get in a charge next turn. But because I'm going to have to charge, otherwise I'm just going to be dead and not get in. I mean, even if I just charge and die, it doesn't matter. It's just a matter. I just need to charge and. Uh, just to, I mean, if I live and I take something with me, that's a lot better than just sitting there and getting shot off the table. So that was going to have to be some pressure on me uh, in my next turn to figure out what to do. On the left side, the Tundra Wolves only took a single point of damage from the Ice Nyads. So I was good to go there, and, I, and it just kept me uh, jamming him up a little bit. So 
I was pretty happy with that going into my turn, but I was still going to have to make a make some sort of movement because of the damage to my one unit of Sons of Corgan. And then the uh, stupid foxes had done wounds to my to Magnil, so then I couldn't fly them up there to start killing the bolters. And so that means my plan of, of attacking the artillery hill was uh, not going like I wanted. But it's still a plan, and I still had I'm still I had that as my plan, and I had the idea of the trying to get the markers across the table. Those were that was the uh, my goal, and it didn't really matter the losses in a game like this as long as you can make the objectives. My friend Dave is a consummate cavalry guy, and his motto at any time is if you don't know what to do, charge. So that's what I did. I I just decided to get everything engaged and everything um, messed up to try to make the game just a little bit more uh, convoluted. So it's not such a you know it's just a perfect set piece. I didn't want that. I wanted I wanted to create chaos. So what I did was I charged my rightmost unit of tundra wolves into his uh, frostfang calf. The other unit just moved up in support. The uh, Magnil just left the melee and went up next to them to try to get in position to rush the stupid bolt throwers again on the next turn. My knights there, I mean, sorry, my sons of Cork and I just turned and just killed the snow foxes because it didn't matter to me because, I mean, I was in position. And now, you see, I've got kind of a, a little path that I can get those guys through uh, to, to attack, the to pinch off those trolls or to attack the uh, Frostbank calf. The... Uh, Sons of Corrigan that were highly wounded went ahead and destroyed the Ice Naiad unit, which was pretty good since they have ensnare. But I hit on fours, I mean threes normally, so I mean 18 swings is it pretty good. The uh, my chosen he went ahead and charged into his general on the uh, Frostfang. I, I guess I thought maybe he was a thane on a Frostfang, so that was probably a mistake on my part. But then I moved my knights up there to, uh, I mean my sons of Corrigan up there to support. Because I know that the uh, trolls would probably kill that unit in front, but I want to be in position with my with my other unit to destroy the trolls uh, in, a, in a peace swap here. Over on this flank, my sons of Corgans and the Thane and the uh, horse raiders went ahead and charged his unit of ice naiads because I, I could get to him this turn because he had charged those foxes out. Uh, into something over toward my uh, Magnilt. So now that kind of left a hole open. So I went ahead and just bashed through there, killing those guys, and then giving the uh, my first token that I didn't own on my own, I hit first capture token, to my horse raiders. And so they had it, and then they just backed up along with the thing. I knew that my the guys there were going to get jumped on by the trolls. There was nothing I could do about it. But I, I thought that uh, because of my unit of Tundra Wolves holding, you know, I was actually not in bad shape because he was jammed up, his trolls were jammed up, his other unit of trolls was jammed up and really couldn't get to me uh, like he thought. So this is going to be one of the weirdest things you've seen. My camera died at the start of this turn and so I could not take any more pictures. So now the rest of the battle, everything is from Craig's position. So I hope you'll enjoy this because it's actually going to be a little harder for me to figure out what's going on. This is a picture of the turn where the Ice Naiads died. I had a flank charge from my unit of Sons of Corgan, but they were hindered by the wall. But I mean, I had so many swings and then the Thane and the um, Horse Raiders as well hitting into them is what killed them. And so you'll see the uh, thought, the the actual the picture before was from the from my turn from earlier in the turn. Again, this is after melee. This is the Craig Cam view of the what he sees. You can see my sons of Corgan, the chariots there in the uh, foreground are sitting there right in front of his trolls. So I'm figuring that I'm going to get munched on by trolls. Uh, I mean, he would be a hindered charge because he's going to have to go up on that wall to uh, attack me because his base is wider than mine. So I was going to be good to go that direction. So, anyway, we'll have to see what Craig does in his next turn, and then let me try to explain what it is from a totally another viewpoint. So, as Charles went ahead and charged into my uh, Tundra Wolves, the the question we have is whether we could he could slide over far enough, and and it's just so hard with these walls and stuff. So we didn't, I didn't argue. I just thought he had it. So he went ahead and charged in to get rid of those because he needed those out of the way. That way he could start to flank my uh, sons of Corrigan there that you can see in the left side of the picture and I'm pretty sure that uh, 
that many attacks probably got rid of those tundra wolves. Sorry for the uh, blurry picture, but I think I needed to show it to you. Uh, obviously an amateur shooting since he hasn't taken pictures in battle reports before. But uh, yeah, his trolls went ahead and charged the cursed sun in the flank. I know it's not a flank since he's an individual. And then the uh, general on Frostfang char uh, countercharged the uh, the cursed sun. I, I wasn't really sure of why I did this because now those trolls are turned, you know, to all those units behind him. But I think he had a plan in mind. I just really wasn't sure what was going on with it. Uh, so anyway, of course the uh, the guy that guy dies from all those attacks. Are you kidding me? So uh, he goes and he's able to turn his trolls around to do something else. Yeah, his uh, other unit of trolls that's in front of the artillery hill went ahead and charged into the unit of uh, Sons of Corgan, the ones that have taken six wounds from the bolt thrower. But I actually think they lived this turn, but I'll have to look at the next picture to find out. Nope, I can see now that the uh, unit of the wounded Sons of Corgan on the far flank did die from the uh, troll charge. I mean, they were down six wounds to start. So did the uh, Chosen Son. He was gone. Uh, the trolls in the middle just kind of rotated back. You knew they were going to take a chariot and something else maybe in the face uh, this turn. The um, I was not in bad position on my right flank over there because it looked like now I could charge both those trolls that were victorious and the uh, Frostfang Cav uh, just because I could just move the unit of Tundra Riders, I mean Tundra Wolves, out of the way and that would just open up the, the charge into the uh, Frostfangs from my uh, Sons of Corrigan unit. And uh, these are the ones with the guys, so they weren't as, uh, taking as much damage from shooting. Craig was shooting everything at my guys, and he was just not rolling to hit. And if he rolled, if he rolled to hit, I mean, he wasn't doing a lot of wounds even when he was hitting. So it wasn't, it wasn't that, you know. It, technically, I should have been losing units over there, whole units. But it just the dice just were not going as far as the shooting phase. Now the melee, he was doing just fine uh, the entire game. But uh, the shooting phase for him was uh, not very good. All right, this is my response over here on the right hand side. The horse raiders that had the token went ahead and just backed up with it and started walking, uh, just trying to get away so that they could uh, maybe redeploy and then go over uh, to the other side of the table where I was doing a little better. My units of Son of Gor Cons of Corrigan hit the uh, trolls, and then the other unit of uh, Sons of Corrigan hit the Frostfang right, along with Magnil because I thought I needed that extra amount of hits to uh, maybe potentially kill him, so kill that unit. So uh, it's pretty much a uh, what I call an atch dice turn, and stuff that should have died didn't die. The uh, the units of sons of uh, the uh, Frostfangs, they I rolled a ton of wounds. But then I rolled a crappy dice roll, and so I think they rolled like a two or a three, or, I mean a three or something like that for their break test, and wavered them, which was still okay. Uh, so I mean they were they were in uh, not bad shape, and I think I wavered maybe the trolls that time too, uh, but I really thought I, I felt I could have should have been able to kill them as well. Now the trolls on this side, there was no way I was going to hit them because I was hindered with the uh, sons of Corgan this time, and. Uh, the, and plus I lost my Thunder's Charge one, so then I'm rolling for fours and fours, and there was no way. So I think I got it. I did six, which was not horrible, but um, uh, I mean, I, I knew there was no way. I was just trying to, to, to figure out a way to get away with that, that token, <laughs> to get the other, just trying to delay him any way possible that I could to uh, to uh, preserve that token for for since I've already got two on this other side over here and uh, he's gonna have to go get the one that's coming up the left side here I apologize if anything's out of sequence it's just a little harder for me to figure out what's happening the over here on this right flank Craig destroyed my sons of Corgan unit the uh, the good thing for me is that uh, that I, he was jammed up because I went ahead and charged the Thane into his um, general on Frostfang so I was just trying to delay him. Excuse me. And then the the horsemen are going to try to move over to the right hand side where my uh, other units are. The it was obvious that his uh, trolls did not break last turn. I must have rolled really bad uh, not to have killed him in one go. And uh, so that was that was bad. But then he's return wax. I don't think he did very much damage to me either. 
the uh, you can see over there that he had just backed up his his uh, frost fangs to to be able to uh, for I wouldn't take a flank charge with my dire wolves I mean my, my tundra wolves uh, so I was going to have to hit them head on again but I mean I didn't really think it'd take that much to polish them off and I think I'm going to send Magneld in there as well or, or he might go somewhere else I'll have to see yeah here's my poor Thane uh, getting getting ready to get beat up on by all of that stuff so uh, he does look pretty cool though with it on that brass on that brass bull <laughs> so uh, anyhow so his, his his job is to take one for the team right here so my uh, Sons of Corgan had only done six wounds to that troll horde, which is probably going to be enough to get him on the next turn. Uh, you can see the uh, artillery hill is still intact, even though that's my goal to get rid of it. But I have a lot of crap closing in on it right now because my uh, my tundra wolves can eyeball the hill now and uh, try to get up there to uh, get rid of some of those uh, stupid ice kin bolt throwers. So the uh, Sons of Corgan did their Sons of Corgan job and wiped out the Frost Fangs and also wiped out the Trolls. I knew that I could probably get them in two turns. Uh, you can see Magnelt, he's there. He's only got one wound on him because he's been iron resolving his wounds back. The uh, Horse Raiders are boogieing. I, I've tried to move them eight, then I realized I can only move them five because they've got that stupid token. Uh, I'm pretty sure that my um, unit there of with this kind of star on their banner has a token from uh, something but I, I maybe it didn't I think maybe that I just had an extra token there because because uh, I didn't want to put it on on them for some reason I, I can't remember that we turned out with one extra token at the end of the game and so I'm thinking that there wasn't one on them but I thought that they had got one when they had killed the naiads so uh, I don't know it, it didn't really matter because at the end of the game I was going to have one more token than him I think and that was what was I was trying to do so the Thane died this turn and his trolls they're, they're wounded six and he tried to regenerate them but they didn't get any back so that was good for me the uh, they all moved up and also the ice naiads the you can see that the general on the frost bank has moved up behind my hapless unit of my hapless unit of uh, horse raiders there who are just trying to get away with their hard one token so that was that was for them and uh, uh, they were gonna have a hard time because they can't march you know with the token in hand so they're probably gonna get caught but I was trying to do everything I could to uh, to uh, try to keep that token because now he's already killed my unit of Draugr on the other flank with the have one chip and so uh, that one chip I have is right now I am I am, uh, I think I'm down a, a chip to him, or we're tied. Maybe we're tied. I think maybe that's what we are, that we're tied. So the assault on the artillery hill has begun with the Tundra Wolves killing one and turning toward the uh, the other ones to start wrapping them up. The uh, You can see my, my sons of Corgan there have seven wounds on them. I think they took that in a fight against the other trolls that they fought. It may be some from shooting as well. I'm pretty sure some of that is from shooting, as a matter of fact. So, uh, anyway, it's the uh, Magniel is standing there, and, and like I say, he'll have no wounds by the time he gets into his next fight because of, uh, uh, and I don't know why he still has one on him there. But the other unit of Sons of Corrigan, they're cleared out. The Draugr are now moving up, and they're they're going to cross the table. They've tossed across the table edge, and now they are they are officially two points of scoring for me. My Sons of Cork and Cavalry had dropped their token, and then the Horse Raiders moved in to pick up. So the others, they have two tokens right now, uh, just still trying to get away from that stupid uh, Lord on the Frost Fang. The, uh, what happens here is just, I hate this freaking rule, and I've said it a hundred times, and I, and I hate it when games are on the line this happens, because everybody says, well, get good, do whatever. You can't help a snake eyes. You see how much damage I did to that unit with my sons of Corgan and Magnilled hitting them in the, in the side and then roll snake eyes. And really my role to, to kill them wasn't even that good because they had six to start with. And you're thinking about all those shots that I have. Uh, it was really kind of a low roll. Uh, I mean, I should have had, you know, way, they should have been over 20 uh, with pretty easy. But now I am totally screwed because my flank is to that general. And... Uh, 
I can't. I'm. I'm just stuck, and now those trolls are going to get to swing back on my heavily damaged unit, and it's going to be bad. So I have finally, on turn whatever this is, uh, my turn five, uh, have taken the artillery hill, and it is mine. And uh, there is no more artillery. My Draugr are standing there, waving their little uh, tokens like man, like a uh, manhole covers, and and uh, cheering on the, uh, cheering on my forces because I have now scored. I have two points. And uh, but the game is actually Craig's right now at this point in time because of uh, he has another turn to uh, to beat me up. But the, the biggest important thing is is these units get up there, kill those things, and then turn. And now they're aimed toward. Even though I rolled that snake eyes, I am aimed right at the flank of those stupid trolls uh, with with those two units. And uh, and so I have a, a good a good opportunity here to. Uh, and it wasn't planned, don't get me wrong. I planned to kill those guys and not have to deal with the snake guys. But now, uh, this just happened to be there after killing those guys. And now I'm in really good shape because I'm, on top of that, I'm going to get the plus one for charging down the hill. So the uh, trolls who should have been dead countercharged and killed my sons of Corgan. The, um, the general on the frost fangs charge in and uh, destroy my horse raiders. I mean, he's going to have a gajillion tree and attacks. So uh, this is not going to go well because right now he's got the two points uh, that I've been I've been trying to uh, to get going through this entire game. So I, I need one of those points to at least get a draw, and uh, he's got them both. And now I am in deep trouble, and it's my turn six. So here we are, the last turn of the game. Uh, Magnell just went in and just killed that troll unit all by himself. He didn't need any stinking help. So the uh, the sons of Corgan on the hill and the Tundra Wolves went in and charged the uh, general on Frostfang and killed him. And this was at the, uh, there was a turn seven, but it wouldn't have mattered either way. So so I have one, two, three, four tokens, uh, two from those guys and two from, uh, uh, and I don't know how I have four tokens. Yeah, I do. I have two from those guys and I have two over there that I captured. And then, uh, Craig has, there's one that's unoccupied, and then Craig has two, one on that unit of, uh, so there's one token too many somewhere. I think it was mine. I don't know why I have an extra token. But uh, anyway, Craig definitely has two. I definitely have have three, and there's definitely one standing there where it's not, where nothing's there. So it's going to be, I'm going to have three tokens to his two for a very, very minor win. And we totaled up the, uh, 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 battle score at the end of the game we were within a couple of hundred points so it's pretty much just a straight edge out very 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 close i mean it was right down to the last down to the last uh second there but um uh, anyway an intense game a good game everything i think both of us uh i think it was a game anybody would would want to play and enjoy playing again What a great game. Playing your best friend, coming down to the last dice roll on the last turn. Uh, you can't ask for any better than that. The uh, I, I really thought when I rolled that snake eyes against his trolls that I was totally and completely doomed. And it turns out the guys killing the artillery are the one that rescued my ass uh, because they were able to charge down and take the token away from the uh, general on the, uh, on the frost bank. Uh, that guy was already wounded to six wounds, so he was he was pretty vulnerable to getting charged. But I chicked away at him the whole game with with stuff, but I, I just never could kill him because I mean he's a big tough guy, and uh, and it seemed every time that I would get fighting him, Craig sent somebody to the rescue to knock him off. So it was he, he didn't uh, he he, uh, he he was very resilient, and uh, and that, that's an awesome awesome uh, model to use if you're using Northern Alliance. The, uh, I think the secret to my game, this game, as far as the game, uh, not anything particularly tactical, strategy-wise, and stuff like that, but just having a plan and sticking to it. Um, using those uh, Draugr to move my chips forward was uh, part of the plan, because I knew they couldn't hurt anything immediately. So their best job in life was just to to uh, 
transport chips across the table uh, for the push scenario. And if I would have positioned the one here on the left that you see in this picture actually uh, a little bit better, I could have probably got away with getting all three across. Uh, I got early on, I got lucky uh, when when his dryad, uh, I mean his naiads died and got gave the one, one of his to my uh, uh, horseman and the, and the horseman walked it over to the other side of the table he finally came up and killed it but I was able to get that token back from uh, with the charge on the last turn uh, we had an extraneous chip I'm pretty sure it was the one that's on the ground I think I had two on one unit by mistake and uh, just because I couldn't reach it because it was down inside the uh, multi base so uh, I think it really only only had so I had uh, three chips across for six points and he had two chips across for four points. I think it's what, what, it, what it turned out to be because there was one chip that was unaccounted for and I think that was the one that was on the ground in the last picture. Uh, probably the one that his trolls had had uh, but I don't, I don't really remember what happened to it but uh, it didn't really matter. I mean as long as I had one more than he did across uh, at the end of the game it was really all I cared about. I mean some stuff happened in this game that <clears throat> was just unfortunate. His snow fox was wounding uh, Magnilled, one of the best heroes around, uh, with two wounds right off the bat, so I couldn't fly up and kill the artillery hill. That was big. On the other hand, though, Craig wasn't rolling really well with his artillery, so in the end, it probably didn't hurt me all that much. So I ended up keeping Magnil down to charge into into some of the fights. So so he was basically was the one that that helped kill the. Uh, uh, troll unit toward the end of the game. As a matter of fact, he killed it by himself. And then he helped uh, early in the game with the Frostfang Cab by do a dual charge with them and the um, Sons of Corgant into that unit and wavering it. And so that was that was key. And I think maybe that that is the key to using this army is is that you have those seven swing heroes uh, that you can charge in, or even even the five swing hero, the uh, uh, the Thane on on his thing, to, uh, charging in with the cavalry or with the uh, Tundra Wolves and, and you know, trying to get combo charges on things is the probably way this army would work best. But uh, I really liked how this army played. I mean, it played exactly uh, the way I wanted it to play. I, I took some risk early. I probably should have charged as early as I did. But I didn't want to lose that Sons of Corgan unit without it killing something in, in melee. It was just, I mean, I've, I've got rid of the Naiads with it, then it took a hit from the Trolls, but... Uh, yeah, it died, but it was okay. I mean, like I said, it gave itself, it, it did itself well. Uh, because I'm pretty sure it killed that Nyad, helped kill one of the Nyad units. So, uh, And that's who was carrying all the chips on Craig's side of the table. So, anyway. Uh, anyway, I'll just, I do like the army. Uh, I like how Craig's army played. He showed me another list, which I didn't like near as much as this one. Uh, but I think maybe that the, if I had any criticism, not to the list at all, but you know he sits up with those snow foxes, the naiads, and then the trolls. I might have stepped the trolls out, so they're not directly behind. I may have stepped them over so like their halfway point or their 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 um, leader point was exposed, so they could see around all those other units. Because I think that would help either with flight charges or potential regular charges, because. It's hard when they're so close together if you jam them to, to pivot your base enough to actually get into the fight. So if I had a criticism, I would say to stagger the trolls, um, excuse me, so that their leader point is outside the box of the foxes and the and the uh, naiads. I think that would have helped. It would have taken a little bit more space on the table, but I, I really think, though, that that would have been a, a beneficial thing because then it would be very easy for the trolls and the naiads to charge into the same unit. And over on the on the on his right flank, my uh, tundra wolves actually held him up for a turn. And uh, if he would have been staggered like that, I think he could have easily gotten around it and uh, and messed me up a little bit a, a little bit better chance of it anyway. So that would be my only. I mean, I can't say it's a critique, but it's just say it might be a technique to to help him out in the future, so that you don't get jammed up in a line and you, you're basically forming a conga line. So uh, you got to figure out a way to break the line, and it may be that you stagger the, the naiads one way and the trolls the other way, and and the, the snow foxes uh, take their role of taking the charge and slowing or slowing stuff down by just charging it themselves, because they're pretty fast too. Uh, 
I really liked my uh, choice of the Tundra Wolves. I was thinking about Snow Foxes, but the Tundra Wolves are a nice, light cavalry. You know, I mean, people look at them as hounds, but they're not. I mean, they're actually just like uh, light cavalry is in some armies. And so, uh, I mean, they hit on threes. They've got the Thunder's Charge 1. They've got an Armor 4. I mean, they're fairly resilient. I mean, they're not cheap, but on the other hand, they're... I mean, their speed is just amazing. I mean, they're charging 18 inches. So the other guy basically gets off the line, and, and you're jamming him right off the bat. And that was What that would do, though, is allow me to march the Sons of Corgan. They're full 16 inches forward, ready to exploit it in the following turn. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I mean, that was the idea of the army. So, anyway, I, I really was happy how the army performed. I, I was, I was, uh, uh, I mean, my dice at times were a little distressing, but it really, it really, because of of the sticking to my plan, it kind of uh, helped the. Uh, it it my, my dice didn't matter as much just because I was trying to do something and trying to keep the objective, and everything was going toward that goal. So uh, that was my my final thoughts of the game. Was just uh, if I had the reason to win, it's just focusing on the. Uh, scenario from minute one all the way to the end of the game. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it.